So it's Thursday, and finally, a day when I don't have anything to do, where the weather's nice. So I am heading out for another little hike. Um, I am going back out to a hike point that I came back past when I went to Homefirth. And I, I did spot this... Um, this car park it's free car park but it's right at the head of a particular trail that i want to have a go at and it's called the wessenden head reservoir trail and it's not going to be a hard walk it's got a proper laid out walk trail it's probably pretty good for a novice, pretty safe, um, and that's ideal for me. So, it's quarter to nine. I wanted to get there reasonably early. There is a car park. It's quite small. It's really just a lay-by. Um, but if that's full, there is good lay-by lay -by parking back further down the main road which won't be a hardship to get to. 42 minutes to get there because of the traffic. Um, that's fine, we can manage that. Let's get going and let's see if we can find some parking. Excellent, let's see you at the other end.
have arrived. And it's so quiet. I've only been here a few minutes. There were two other cars when I arrived and one other has now pulled up there. Um, and I had barely arrived, and I'd already seen a curlew, a marsh harrier, and I don't know if you can hear them, the skylarks. I'm using my sponge wind muffler today. It's going to be wind all the way, but I have bought the other one in case a gust of wind t takes my sponge muffler off, away from me. I'll show you a bit of this beautiful scenery. I'm going to get off this main road because we're going to be walking off of peace, so to speak, and at least the car noise will then be gone. So I'm going to pack my rucksack on my back, and uh, I've brought my binoculars today. I don't know if I'm going to need them. Whenever I take them out, I never see anything worth looking at through them, but um, and a meadow pipit has just landed on the road across from me. Just been waiting for that couple to go. They look like hardened hikers. They had all the correct gear, which I don't have. <laughs> so, um, Wow, the curlews up here do not care. I love the sound of the curlews. Right. Car's locked up. Let's get going. This landscape is absolutely incredible. Look at this. Can you imagine having this as your back garden? Oh, I've just realised what this is. This is the memorial to Keith Bennett. I didn't know this was here. I thought this was somewhere else. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm not going to film 
any more of that. Um, for those of you who don't know, I mean Google Keith Bennett, you'll find what you need to find. Um, he was one of the Moore's murderers' victims. He was never found. Very sad. Anyway, look at this. So there is, in the distance, the Wessenden Head Reservoir, which was really all I was going to do. However, this looks pretty easy. It's not really a day out, is it? Look how close that is. So I'm going to aim for that and around that and then see how I feel because, as I've said before, I am an unfit person who needs more exercise. Can still hear those skylarks.
So I've walked past the Wessenden head reservoir and instead of just doing that and going back I reckon going up to the I think this is the actual Wessenden reservoir kind of curlew battle going on there. There it is. Yeah, so I've gone past the place that I was only going to walk to and now I'm heading for what I believe to be the actual Wessenden Reservoir and I might as well do that because I uh, I found a I'm sure you can hear that but I don't think you can see There are four curlews circling up there, and I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's a territorial thing, or... if they're chicks that have left the nest. There's a little bit of excitement going on there. Maybe there's a marsh harrier, because you get them up here. Can't tell from here. They're very excited about it, no matter what it is. Now, there's a lovely track running all the way up there, but... I'm going to stick to where I was supposed to be going because the uh, the reservoirs are a good landmark to stop you getting lost and I'm not an experienced hiker. Oh, there's another slug. I love slugs and snails. Nature is a wondrous thing. Look. That's called cuckoo spit, and inside there is a little insect in its kind of larval baby state, like a, looks like a giant aphid. And that spit, the, the bubbles that it's made around it, protect it from being eaten. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I'll try again. Look at this lovely path. Um, yeah, so the reservoirs provide good landmarks to stop me getting lost. And you can see where the road runs as well, which really helps. I'm not experienced. Um, and I'm not stupid enough to think that I could go wandering off into these murky hills and find my way back. It pays to be a bit careful. But um, yeah, so I found uh, a website by a lady who documents her walks on a, a blog. And I'll put a link into the notes for this particular one. You can look at her others. And it gave me some good things to look out for while I'm on this particular walk. It's really handy. It meant that when I came out here, I could immediately spot the things that I needed to be aware of. But this is not a difficult walk. 
if you are used to walking off-road and you are fit enough I mean I'm not fit and I can do this so if you don't have any limb problems or it might get you a bit out of breath but that's probably because I'm unfit and uh, this is a splendid splendid walk and the weather today it's going to be about, I don't know, 15, 16 up here today. And when the wind dies down, it feels really warm. But the wind is very refreshing. But later, about four or five o'clock, it's going to hit 21 degrees. And I don't really want to be out here then because it's exposed here. There's nowhere to shelter. But this is a really fabulous walk. I was worried there would be loads of people here, but I've seen that couple and one lone male walker in front of me and they've disappeared long ago because I'm, I'm not doing much of a pace here I'm just enjoying the fact that I'm out and walking um, I'm not trying to set a pace here There's a lot of bird life out here. It's great that that's all you can hear. Apart from the wind, of course, but I don't think you can hear that because I've got my little sponge muffler on and the wind has not removed it. So we are having success after success with this. I did bring the other one with me just in case. The dead cat version. Or dead kittens or whatever they call them. Which is a terrible title for them really. There are still remnants of damp up here. We haven't had a lot of dry days. What we will often get at the moment is half a day of gorgeous weather and then it just tips down for the rest of it. So it's, it's two seasons in one day. So yesterday morning Actually, yesterday wasn't too bad. It started out beautifully, turned very dull and threatening rain, and then turned into an absolutely gorgeous evening. Really warm, and I had the window open until I went to bed. I love the smell of the damp peat. I love that earthiness. It reminds me of going to those rainforest greenhouses like Kew Gardens. It's like when I open the lid of my terrarium and I can smell that lovely damp warmth. Love that earthiness. Look at all these ferns. I was here a few weeks ago, from more roughly around here for my home Firth walk, I heard a cuckoo, which you wouldn't have heard because I didn't have my wind muffler at that point, which is a shame you could have heard that. 
but I'm wondering if they're up here or whether they've already left. I don't know how long they stay in the country and whether as soon as they've done laying their eggs in other birds' nests, whether they fly off to pastures new. Splendid foxgloves. Strange place for a, a dragon cover. I'm pretty sure I can see some birds on the water down there. So I'm just going to get my binoculars out and have a look and see what they are. The birds on the water are Canada geese and one tufted duck. <laughs> Presumably his missus is on a nest somewhere. Um, I held back for a bit. I needed some water. I'm trying to pace myself with water because A, I hope I've only brought one bottle with me and B, I'll just want to keep wanting to go to the loo which is really annoying when you're out on trails like this. It's easier for men, not so much for women. Uh, and it's, there's nowhere to hide. <laughs> uh, and there were a couple of walkers coming up behind me who are going at a faster rate than me, so I just stopped for a bit and let them go ahead. Get this clear water. There are tiny little outlets like this all along the trail as the water runs down the hillsides. Oh. Not a gravestone. That'll be to do with the water company, I shouldn't wonder.
Looking forward to getting to the bottom there and I'm going to stop for a bit and just enjoy the silence. It seems that people just, they get this far and they turn and they come back again. And I'm going to take a slightly different route on the way back and explore that lower, that first reservoir. Because I kind of skirted around it on the way up, but you can walk a slightly different route on the way back. Tiny bridge. all the way down and there you can see the Canada geese just in the distance there. Sorry if I'm talking very quietly. You don't shout when you come out on hillsides like this. the couple from this morning. Look, more foxgloves. going to wait here for a moment because that couple are really chatty. Even out here where the landscape is beautiful, I still feel really embarrassed about walking around with a selfie stick. But it's the easiest way to record because when you've got it on a stick like this, as long as you've got it pointed roughly in the right direction, you don't have to keep looking at what you're recording. And the whole point of being out here is not to look at it through the lens. So I'm looking where I'm walking and at the landscape and looking for birds and things like that. But I have the camera pointed off in a slightly different direction, capturing uh, the landscape around me. It's the only problem with doing a lot of vlogging and things is that you end up spending too much of your time looking through a lens and to me that's a problem so look thistle and a bee Yeah, so at least with the selfie stick, I can point it in one direction. I don't have to keep looking at it. I'm looking at all the things around me. And if I spot something interesting, I'll turn the camera on it. Like this rather splendid little brook. I love the sound of running water. 
And look at the way that has made its path down through the, the hillside. Well, at least you wouldn't run short of water out here. See these old dry stone walls where they've built this up generations ago because you would have had farmers here and shepherds out on the hillside managing the sheep. I think I've only seen about two sheep since I've been here. I don't know whether this is a cordoned off section because of the reservoirs or whether they just don't populate this bit. Oh, I can really feel the warmth now. The temperature's going to climb to 21 degrees at about 4 o'clock. And I definitely don't want to be out here then. Another slug. I need to look up what type of slug they are. They're probably called black something whatever slugs. I love all these textures. I love this ruggedness. Oh. More walkers coming through. But by the time I get back to the car, that car park's going to be full. I did spot the lay-by on the way in, which was my alternative parking, and there were already people filling that up. Although there was a lot of space there, so I don't think you'd be really stuck for parking on an average day. And there was a little burger van there as well, so I would imagine if you got really hungry, you'd probably be okay. I have a healthy snack in the car, which I probably won't eat, <laughs> but I brought it anyway because not eating for me is a good thing. This gets me out and away from the kitchen, better focused, away from the computer, away from YouTube. I mean, if I had all this on my doorstep, I'd probably be out every day. But it's not, you know, this is a 40 minute drive. And I don't want to be doing that every day to go out and do a walk like this because, you know, the walk is lovely and it's relaxing and it helps you switch off. But the drive there and back removes all that and plonks you back into civilization. And then you come back feeling the same because, you know, you did your 40 minute drive mostly through, through town. So that's one reason I don't do it very much. This is really glorious though. I'm so pleased I decided to go on this today. I booked it in my diary a week or so ago, seeing a change in the weather, but um, it was only last night that I decided, right, I'm gonna do this. Because I've been keeping an eye on that weather. And I think the rain is gonna return tomorrow, so.
if you can see that. Right in front of me. Sitting on those ferns is a reed bunting. I'm not even going to move. If he sees me, he'll go. Oh, there's Walker. Oh, he's gone anyway. There's Walker's coming up behind me. <laughs> the bird life here is great. I see things that I rarely see. So you see the curlews and the meadow pipits and the skylarks and, and if I mentioned the marsh harrier. Um, and now reed bunting. One solitary rhododendron. Right, let's make our final push for the reservoir. And then we'll stop for a little bit. I think what I just heard then is either a willow warbler or a wood warbler. I'm not very good at my warblers. I know a chiff chaff, but warblers I am not good on. There's another rebunting, that's the female I think. Very exciting to see these creatures so close. Like spring watch all over again. So here we are coming in. The walkers are catching me up fast. Which is no surprise. I don't feel tired or out of breath. But it is getting quite warm. Landscape is changing. Look more trees.
There's a few too many people here now. This is like a main vantage point, a viewing point, because we are now at the side of the reservoir. Um, there's a couple of hill runners. Pretty brave of them. Um, uh, an older couple and a lady with another younger girl and a dog and they seem to be running as well. I'm trying to avoid them all. <laughs> what can I say? They all seem to be going along. There's another route. Let me show you. There's another route along there. There's a house there. Look how fabulously isolated that is. Um, I'm going to look at the map and just see where that goes. But at the moment I am sticking, just sticking to the side of the reservoir. That other young couple I saw, they walked up this way. In fact, that might be them coming back again in the distance. Um, it's fine because I don't want to go too far from here. I don't even know what the time is. But this, the stillness of that water is beautiful. to find somewhere to sit but they haven't put any like vantage points in two mallards hey ducks I'm always surprised at how little bird life comes and uses the reservoirs you think there'd be all sorts of things hunting here, but maybe there's not much living in here. I mean, it's a man-made thing. Ooh. What is that? That was something like a, a red shank or something. It looked a bit small. I'll need to look that up when I get back. I think that'll do as a seat for me. Right, so I'm going to carry on along this other route. That main trail is the Pennine Trail, which is the one that's laid out for walkers. Um, but I'm going to follow the one where I could see this couple coming down from. Um, if you follow it all the way, it kind of then dog legs to the right. And I may end up picking up this same trail, but I'm going to see how I get on. I've only been out 
an hour and a bit. Feels like longer. I'm just going to carry on. This is an official trail anyway, so let's go. to get quite warm. So there's the other trail there. Oh look, there's all the sheep. I knew there were sheep somewhere. So let's do a bit of this trail. Let's see how we feel.
There you go. That's a curlew feather. Proof that life exists. bird's nest in that fern. I think it's a reed bunting. That's what all that noise was, if you can hear it. I'm assuming this is working. I hope so, because you'll be hearing wonderful things. So, I'm going to keep following this trail. I'm hoping it's going to match up with that down there at some point. And if it doesn't, I will just turn back. It doesn't matter how far out you come, you will always find litter. I've not seen much out here, thankfully. Apart from that, two Red Bull cans and a cigarette butt so far. But, you know, <laughs> this feels like the most remote hike I've ever done since I used to go on holiday with my parents and we used to walk in the Lake District. And this is fab. This is what I've been looking for. It's like a proper getaway. Somebody down there. Is that a person? Not sure what it is actually. The viewpoints here are amazing. It's like you think you're just on a trail and then suddenly you'll turn a corner and there'll be an expanse of landscape in front of you. This isn't difficult terrain though. I'm still wearing the walking boots that I glued together last year. And so far, they are doing well. I do have another pair, which I don't like as much, but... Oops. I, uh, I've put my memory foam insoles into these walking boots just to give me that extra bit of cushioning but since I bought those sketches my feet feel so much better I wear my old trainers for cleaning jobs but whenever I'm out normal walking or doing errands, I wear those new ones, the sketches, and they really are pretty fabulous, I have to say. I wonder what lives down there. I can hear all sorts of bird chirps that I don't quite recognise. And then I'll get a flash of wings and something will be gone. And of course a lot of the birds here are brown. They're designed to blend in. <laughs> so you never quite work out what they are. There is a man down the end there. Slightly annoying. I don't know what he's doing, he's just sitting there. Are there two people? I can't 
can't tell if it's two people or one. There are a couple of walkers coming up behind me, I think, so... Even when you're out here, hiking on your own, you need to be aware of your own safety. I read an article the other day about how women hikers out on their own being patronised by men, asking them if they know where they're going. Do you need directions, love? Would you like me to walk with you, sweetheart? And they have no idea how, you know, patronising or potentially threatening that can feel. I don't know, people might go, oh, goodness sakes, he's just trying to be helpful. But you don't know. A couple of years ago, I'd gone into a bus, which I occasionally do, if I know I'm going to want a drink or something, so I don't drive. And uh, I was waiting at the bus stop to come back, and this bloke in the queue just turned around and started talking to me. And then he sat next to me on the bus all the way back. And it was really disconcerting because... I don't know who he is, I don't know what his motive is, maybe he was just lonely and wanted a chat, but I don't know that. He could have followed me to my front door, he didn't. Uh, I think he got off the bus before me, but um, I don't know that. And if you're someone that's had a, a bad experience, say, maybe you've been attacked or whatever it is, that's quite a threatening scenario for some random bloke you've never met to suddenly turn around and start talking to you when you're on your own. Oh, it's that young couple, that's all right. I thought it was a bloke on his own, but it's not. It's that young couple who I saw earlier who were very chatty. That's all right then. They're not going to attack me. But these are the things you, walk, you think about. I mean, if I was out here on my own and I saw no other walkers and then I saw a single bloke walking along towards me um, I don't know what his motivations are, he's probably a nice bloke, but opportunists are everywhere. And I probably watch too many true crime documentaries. They do start to make you feel that everyone's a monster. But sorry to say, there are quite a lot of monsters in the world. Look at this wonderful little river. River? Brook? I think it's I don't know what they call it. It sounds like a brook. And it runs all the way down there and eventually somewhere along the line it ends up down there and maybe it joins the uh, the reservoir the sun's gone in which is nice it's a bit cooler now because I'm starting to get really hot I love how when you're out here and you'll suddenly see a bit of man-made construction which is probably to do with how they're directing the water and there's like a little wall made there and I don't know, these might be really old but they may have been made deliberately for the trails but this water dripping off the rocks here.
that water is brown which will be I would imagine where it's running through the peat oh we have grey wagtails I don't think you can see them on this camera but there are a pair of wagtails here which is rather spectacular There used to be a bridge here. Does that look crossable? I do not want to run the risk of falling in. Waterfall. There would have been a proper bridge here at some point. Well, I'm going to have to cross here. I'm going to put the camera down and focus. I'll see you on the other side, hopefully. Well, I made it. <laughs> well, I don't recommend it if you're not confident. Um, my sense of balance isn't that amazing. I managed it. It was actually harder after getting across the brook. I didn't realise you have to climb up a muddy slope to get to what remains of that bridge and then come back down to this bit of trail here. Um, so I hope I don't have to reverse my journey and go back the other way because that's going to be tough. Might have to stop and lose a layer in a minute. That wind is necessary. So, we are now heading, hopefully, towards the Pennine Trail, which will then bring me nicely back to the reservoir and then onwards back to the other reservoir and then back home and that would be a good walk. Now the website I used to find the information about this trail said the walk takes I think it was about an hour and a half and it's five miles but she clearly walks faster than me. Depends why you're hiking. If you're hiking for the exercise, then you're probably walking fast and maybe not looking at anything. See, that's the trail where I came from. Walked all the way along there, all the way along there, and then just out of sight around the corner there is that little waterfall. I love the sound of water running. I'd rather listen to that all day than the sound of cars outside my windows, but can't have everything. Nice places to live cost money. And we, those of us who don't have the money, get the rest of it. Right.
just spotted some bike wheel marks. I don't know how they got those across the water. Presuming they did. <laughs> Challenging. I need to try and find out what that is because it's really bugging me. And look at this view. This is back towards the reservoir. So that's where I was. And then we walked all the way along there and to here. And that's the trail we're trying to get back on to, to head back. There's a solar panel up there, I wonder what that's for. That's a bit weird. I wonder if that's some kind of weather monitoring thing. up there now. Good grief, where are we going to end up? We must end up coming out down to this reservoir here. This is going to turn into a much longer hike than I thought. It's good if it's not difficult, so to speak. Um, no idea what's going on in there. This is the Marsden Moor Heritage Trail. Crikey, where am I going to end up if I follow this? I'm going to have a look at my map. I'm not feeling terribly confident about this. I have no idea where I'm going. 
there's zero signal up here so although Google Maps is trying to plot me it doesn't really know exactly where I am I mean this is a well laid out trail and I've still only been out less than two hours so when you look on the map these things look really really far and then you walk them and you realize you've done what you thought was the whole walk in about 40 minutes and you carry on so I am going to stick with this that young couple that I saw who must have come from the same car park as me are um, shoes rubbing which is annoying and well Another gone bridge. All right, switching off for a sec. We made it. I don't know why they don't put these little bridges back. A couple of strong wood planks would do the job. we have steps up. Well, if this doesn't burn a few calories, nothing will. I'm starting to regret this. This is a lot further than I meant to go. The thing is, now I've done those 
brook crossings. So is this a mistake then? I think it might be, yeah. <laughs> I think we need to go down the stone path and round the other one. Oh, what, down at the, where that solar thing is? Yeah. Yeah, we got a bit lost. I was following you thinking you knew where you were going because <laughs> I was going to stop at the reservoir and go oh, back yeah. and I thought it doesn't take me long, I'll be fine. Yeah, I don't know because it goes like up and all, all the way round, so I don't think it is. Because we're trying to get back to that Pennine Trail to get back there. Yeah, that's I think what that's what we're going to do. Do you think that is the path then? Well, that stone path looks very steep from there. Yeah. That's what I thought. You can have a look at it and check it out. that, you're just going to have to go back, but I don't, want to, do, I don't want to do those rivers again. I know, yeah. That was a nightmare. I mean, there is a path up that way. So you can go all the way around. This is part of the trail that will take you all the way around. Right. That's what I thought we should yeah. It will take you all the way around, but I don't know how long it takes. Take a few hours. I'd imagine. I feel slightly committed to it now, but then I don't <laughs> want to be walking home, yeah. like getting back to the car at like oh after God, dark or something. That's the problem. See, the map doesn't quite know. We tried to look on our phones because we stupidly yeah. haven't taken a map, but we've no got signal. no service, yeah. It's trying to roughly work out where I am. But it doesn't really know. We just said, where's that lady? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Following you thinking you knew you where you went. Yeah. <laughs> you came to the conclusion you had more brains than us. And no. That's the Blakely Reservoir, that little one down there. Yeah. That's where I thought we were heading to. Now, it thinks we're way up here. If we carry on, oh my jeez, it just keeps going. Yeah. There's no loop. So, but I'm never sure of the accuracy of these things. I wonder if that does go down. It looks a bit iffy. Mm. I reckon we try the stones. Because when you get to the bottom, you've then got to get over the river. Yeah. So. So. Mm. Unless you could just walk straight across here, in which case you'll be fine, but that's probably risky. I'll accept that, but it's all in the little raised. This is telling us to go up there. Yeah, but it just keeps going that way. There's no right turn. It's just a straight route all the way to like Upper Mill or something. By the looks of it, from what from what my map tells me, anyway. Oh, you're following that lady as well. <laughs> That's where I got mine from yeah. last night. Yeah. I was about coming in for ages, and I thought I'll have a quick look. Because that's the. But she doesn't go this far, does she? Reservoir, isn't it? That's the reservoir where you mm. go along the track up there. That's the starting point, so that's the head reservoir, that's the main reservoir. That's the path which you go across. That's the big reservoir back there. So we've gone further. So yeah, but we crossed it, went up along the edge, yeah, cliff edge. Because so you talked about crossing brooks on stones. <laughs> so she suggests that you go down there then? Because she's so, turned yeah. off, hasn't she? She's turned off. Um, so do you remember those stones? There was a little path across and you can cut straight across. That's this bit before you get to that reservoir but I think so is it that that set of stones yeah. down because there was a cut through you could go over the, the, the little you know what fair play she's got down there oh, no, yeah. she, well, she told us to do it anti-clockwise so we've done it backwards we um, went she's, she's gone that way and come back yeah. down she's walked right. up it that instead of walked down it because she said there was a steep hill yeah I will follow you then <laughs> what's your name? Hey, Claudia I'm Emma and this is Alex Hi. oh yeah <sighs> I'm following your general direction. Yeah. I'll probably be slower than you though. No, I'm not really a hiker. <laughs> yeah, we're not together. Trying to get into it. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so tired. So I followed that route for a bit after the uh, the second brook and I'd seen that young couple that I'd seen earlier who I'd said hello to walking off in that direction so I thought well they probably know where they're going I'll follow them 
and but I couldn't see on my map, although the map doesn't work that well because there's no signal out here. Um, it just seemed to keep going. There was no loop back. And then I saw the young couple coming back. So I, I asked them and they said, it just keeps going. So I had to look at the map and it does, it just keeps going over the moor to the next town. It is, is no loop. And then we looked back and you could see what looked like a stone trail. It wasn't marked and it kind of looked like a trail, but you couldn't really see it because it goes right off the edge and down the slope. And we decided that was probably the route we should be taking because we were both using the same website. As you can see, that road, that little track has been made probably in fairly recent times. It's been well done. So there's lots of rocks to step on, but it's incredibly steep. It's like a sheer face down the side. And then you get to the bottom and you can either take the flat route, which goes down towards the next reservoir, which is Blakely Reservoir, or um, I decided to take the steep slope straight up. Now I'm, I'm actually on the Pennine Trail now, and this will take me straight back to the Western Reservoir, the big one, the second one. Um, so the other two, Emma and Alex. Hi, Emma and Alex, if you're looking at this, I'm sure you are not. Um, they've taken the other route, the flatter route, and I climbed up the steep other side, which had no pathway. I mean, it was a proper track, but it was literally, you were scrambling up the, uh, up the grass and the rocks. And I got to the top and I can hardly breathe. I mean, that's, I've done an entire week's worth of gym visits in one day, by the feel of it. So, um, but I feel okay now. So now I'm going to be pretty much flat all the way back now, which will include um, the same route back around the first reservoir, the big one and then I'll take the bottom trail so that I can go alongside the Wessenden Head Reservoir and then back to the car. It hasn't actually taken that long. I feel like I've been out here for hours because there's no way of knowing what the time is unless you look at your, your watch, uh, your clock or your phone or whatever you've got with you. And it's really nice that you can just lose track of time like that. I love that. But I have a feeling, because I looked at the map, that it's still before one o'clock, but the heat is rising. It's getting really hot. Um, it's got to be getting on for 20. So I'm just going to take it easy. I've been rationing my water because mostly because I would just end up wanting to go to the toilet all the time. Um, but also because I don't want to run out of water when it's crucial. I do have another litre in the car for when I get back, so that's all right. But I always tend to ration water I take out because toilet break places are really difficult to find. And I'm not uh, afraid of doing a bit of a wild wee, but it's whether you can find appropriate places because you don't want to offend anybody. Anyway, so I am almost back at the reservoir now. I wish I'd recorded some of that, that walk. Uh, where is it? It's still facing me. It's back there somewhere. Um, but I was with that couple when we were chatting and, and it was too steep to record anything. Um, so yeah, I didn't record that, but I don't think I'd have been able to anyway. Just because it was so steep, I needed to have my hands free to lean on rocks as I climbed down. It was so steep, you were often using your hands to balance yourself as you climbed down. Not for the faint-hearted. 
and perhaps goes to show that I am a little bit tougher, a little bit more resilient and perhaps not quite as unfit as I thought I was, but I am knackered and I know that when I get to the other end and I stop, I am not going to be able to move. I have an apple in the car, which I was thinking, oh, I'll take it, but I won't, I won't eat it. I'm going to need that by the time I get back, because this is turning into a much longer day than I thought. But I did have a good, healthy bowl of porridge this morning, with half a banana and a handful of sultanas. So, I had power food, and I don't feel hungry, because I'm not. Um, there's nothing to reach and graze for out here. Uh, and that's why I don't take snacks, because if I take snacks and I know they're in the bag, I want to eat them because they're there, not because I need them. And that's my problem. If food is there, I would eat it. If it's not there, I won't eat it. So. This is the house that you could see from the reservoir with all the trees around it and the bird sounds have changed so I could I could hear wood pigeons and robins and chaffinches now so the woodland birds oh look more foxgloves um, I'm going to try and do a, a route to plot today on Google Maps but I'm not entirely sure how to do it So I might just nick the map that the blogger used, which is the one that we were using today. Look, yellow foxglove or white foxglove. So pretty. Um, I like this loads of them. Look at all of these foxgloves. I can now hear a wood warbler. And I can hear goldfinches. I've never seen so many foxgloves all at once. How beautiful is that? There's a tree growing out the top of that fence. I don't know why that makes me chuckle, it just does. There are goldfinches up there. So, here we are. This is back at the bridge that I crossed when I first made it around this reservoir. And now it's going to be a case of walking back the same way. Now when you're going out on walks, it's all very well doing the outward route. But you need to factor in your return visit and that's when the energy goes because you're now walking a bit of route you've already done. So, because I have already walked this, I'm going to switch off for the moment and stride out this bit of the trail until I get back to the Westendon Head Reservoir God, if I have to do another hill today, I'm going to cry. Oh, it just feels so steep now. I'm so tired. Yeah, so... There we are. 
Marsden, don't go to Marsden. Unless you're taking camping gear and you're planning to turn it into a two-dayer or finish at the other end and get a cab back, which I know some people do. Don't do it. So here we are. Back at the main Westenden Reservoir. Right, so we're going back along the route we've already done. So I'm going to switch off and I'll meet you back at the Westenden Head Reservoir. See you in a minute. Bye. I've made it back to the Wessenden Head Reservoir, so it's the last landmark on my trip back and I've made the mistake of sitting down for a moment. I've just finished the last of my water but I'm not that far from the car now and I have another litre in the car so I'm not too worried about that. It is really warm although it's windier at this section, so that's good. Uh, I have caught the sun, which is not good. I've kept my hoodie on for most of the trip because I didn't really want to be exposed to the sun, but it just got too hot. So I've had a little bit of sun exposure. So I'll have to be slapping on the old after sun when I get back. Um, it's deceiving because it's windy you think it's cold but it's the rays of the sun not the heat of the sun that does the damage um, anyway I'm also absolutely starving now <laughs> that apple in the car just is so inviting now and then I've only got a 40 minute drive home uh, so Yeah, I'm going to walk this last bit back and uh, it's been beautiful though, look at it. It's just stunning. So I'm going to log off here and I'll catch you back at the car. I'm so tired. <laughs> Oh my goodness, so tired. I need to try and plan this route so I can work out exactly how many miles I've walked today. Uh, it feels like about a thousand. <laughs> <laughs>